I'm Phil Hallam, and for about 40 years, I was the president of the Falk Foundation, which people will recognize as a Pittsburgh institution going back until the 1930s through its uh, provision of the Falk Clinic, the Falk Library at the medical school, uh, the Falk, Falk Clinic. Uh, and um, in the later years of that, um, the interest of the foundation shifted heavily toward diversity in medical care. Was pursuing graduate studies in uh, in, uh, uh, in English at, at Syracuse University, and I, I had a part time job in the hospital. I did many different jobs at the hospital. Uh, the most interesting of it was of them was as a driver of the ambulance. In those days, hospitals operated their own ambulances. And so I got the plush job of uh, being an ambulance uh, driver, uh, which provided me with uh, uh, quarters and a room and board went with, the, with that particular job. So I was in Clover. But um, uh, so I, I spent a couple of years driving the, uh, uh, basically what it was a hearse uh, in those days, a huge Buick Roadmaster uh, ambulance, which had absolutely nothing in the, the back of it except a, uh, a stretcher. I guess there was an oxygen bottle as well. So I had some experience with that. And then when I came to Pittsburgh, I realized that um, <clears throat> There was an immediate need for uh, what we would now call pre-hospital services, but for just for transportation and ambulance services in the Hill District. So in the early 60s, when I became president of the foundation, the emphasis was on civil rights uh, and the issues that were current at the time of desegregation, particularly desegregation in um, medical school admission for uh, African Americans, uh, issues of uh, uh, health disparities in African American populations issues of discrimination in the delivery of care. Uh, and those were the issues that, that I was uh, facing when I first came to the foundation in 1960. Uh, and from that platform, uh, the foundation's interest in creating uh, a black owned ambulance program uh, arose. Uh, where people were not able to access uh, the, the hospital system or even the clinic system, and certainly were not uh, able to uh, receive emergency care. Emergency care was given by the uh, was provided by the by the, by the police department in, in patrol wagons, paddy wagons, and you were simply picked up on the street and transported to the hospital. If you arrived alive, that was good, uh, but there was no such thing as uh, uh, free hospital care at that time. So I saw the, the need for that and uh, began uh, trying to develop plans to move in that direction. The, the lack of, of uh, ambulance services was citywide. Uh, of course, included Homewood and uh, uh, and the North Side in terms of the African American population, but the concentration of that was in the Hill District. And so, uh, also it was uh, it was adjacent to the uh, University of Pittsburgh to the medical school. So our theory was let's at least start something there where we could develop a partnership between uh, the medical school 
and uh, the organizations working in the Hill District, that would be uh, a good starting point. Several people within the once once the uh, organization was incorporated and there was a, an entity called Freedom House Ambulance. Uh, they recruited a, a variety of people, including um, uh, one, of the, one of the early consultants was um, a man named Jerry Esposito, who uh, was a very progressive. Uh, ambulance operator in Indiana, Pennsylvania. He provided a lot of the uh, the operational nitty gritty details of how, what, why, and where, how big should the garage be, and so on, and what kind of vehicles should be used. And then um, the, the first executive director was uh, hired by the board of directors, which the board of directors became uh, the governing body, of course, and uh, was made up of local residents of the Hill District. When we first, when I first uh, proposed this, this plan of uh, ambulance service um, to the uh, Freedom House organization, which is a community organization uh, working on issues of jobs and and uh, other is other community-based issues, uh, I realized that we needed uh, professional input. And I did not realize at the time that Peter Saffer uh, was working uh, on along similar lines, but from his side of the street, which was the clinical and the medical side. And uh, when I learned of his interest, we immediately arranged to get together and uh, realized that uh, we had what he needed and he had what we needed at Freedom House. So those were historic meetings. Those first couple of times we got together and uh, uh, the long and short of that was uh, uh, kind of the concept of uh, we had the bus, he had the gas. Uh, he had the, uh, the clinical know-how to do this. So uh, from that uh, a simple introduction at the beginning, a partnership grew that uh, resulted in what we know now as the present uh, uh, structure and organization of the Freedom House Ambulance. Her leadership was uh, was critical, and uh, Saffer was was uh, uh, brilliant in in putting her in the position. You know, obviously he couldn't continue uh, as a full time medical director of that because he had he was chairman of the Department of Anesthesiology. But uh, by by putting Nancy Caroline, and he, little did he know that he was putting in a uh, an absolutely committed, feisty. Uh, young woman who was completely dedicated to advancing the idea of uh, medicine on the streets. In fact, the title of her of her textbooks, which are still the, the standard in all EMS training across the country, was called Emergency Care in the Streets. And uh, she was tireless. She rode the trucks. She slept on the back of the ambulances. And, uh, and she taught the... Uh, she taught the street smarts uh, that were necessary to make this a success. I was peripherally involved in all that. Uh, that, that, was, that took place a couple of years after the Freedom House's successful run uh, and the Flaherty administration had the position that it uh, it did not uh, like the idea of private contractors, first of all. And there were elements uh, alleged uh, of uh, racist thinking in all of the uh, negotiations with the city because 
this after all was a almost totally black organization and was being very successful and it was um, it was pretty threatening to some people so the long and short of that was that the uh, uh flaherty administration uh, uh cut off all the uh existing contracts that the freedom house had and uh, moved toward developing their own system now i have to say this that uh in retrospect the for the for the wrong reasons that was the right thing to happen because uh, obviously uh any any modern city uh has to have a as part of its public safety uh structure it's got to have an EMS system you know it could no longer operate on the contract system so uh that was a that was a logical step which would have taken place from if had freedom house lasted another couple of years that would have been a normal transition instead of that it was a surgical uh, tra amputation uh which left a lot of bad feelings uh, and so on so um the the city of pittsburgh at that point it was totally clueless and, and uh about how to uh initiate a, an ems system and depended on Freedom House, so that the very, the very people which had all had kicked out the door, it now depended on uh, having uh, as consultants and helping them set up a new system. Uh, the, the early days of that were pretty rocky, but uh, well, after a couple of years, uh, it became the the seed that, that became the seed of what was now one of the best EMS systems uh, in the country. Well, the fact that we could uh, start with absolutely nothing, uh, start negatively, actually way behind the starting line, and put in place uh, one of the, the pioneering uh, examples of pre-hospital care, none of which would have been possible without the partnership with the uh, with the Peter with Dr. Saffer and uh, the University of Pittsburgh uh, School of Medicine. None of that would have happened, and in, in that case, Pittsburgh had the advantage of that, of that kind of a partnership over other places which were just beginning uh, to develop their own EMS system. So we were, in a sense, because of the high trade, high level of training that Freedom House had uh, when it was in existence under the direction of Saffer uh, was was ahead of the time when it came to creating a citywide EMS system. And that's why you have such a good system now. And that's why you have people like John Moon who came out of the system, out of the Freedom House uh, system and became part of the city of Pittsburgh uh, operations over the next uh, couple of decades. And also uh, why uh, a, an outstanding uh, leader like uh, Chief Gilchrist You know, I'm uh, I'm on. I've been retired from the foundation for uh, almost twenty years now, and I'm cr still creaking along. But I keep very much in touch with Freedom House and with John Moon. And uh, John has become, of course, as after the publishing of uh, Kevin Kevin Hazard's book, uh, John Moon became the EMS celebrity of the country. He's he is uh, travels all over the country, uh, making presentations. Uh, discussions of the film and of the book. And uh, I'm also very, I'm very proud of the fact that that happened as a result of this all. And um, I'm sitting here uh, kind of as a proud godfather of all of this, uh, beaming at the success that, uh, that was initiated uh, in 1965 and six in Pittsburgh. And we were the pioneers of that whole movement. 